Okay, so our number 37, the last question on the June 2016 Regents. Uh, here's the full question. Feel free to pause and look at different parts of it and read it. Here, I'll scroll back up. And then press play, uh, please, when you want to solve it with me. Okay, so what do we know here? We, we're told a bunch of stuff. So we're told that this is a problem about drugs that break down the human body. And we're told that drugs break down at different rates and they're or must be prescribed by doctors carefully to prevent complications such as overdosing. The breakdown of a drug is represented by this, this function here. So I'm going to underline this, and then let's talk about this real quick. This function is exponential with a base of E. It's uh, a function where things are uh, decaying because you have a negative exponent here. And N sub 0 is our starting point, essentially. Uh, so in the beginning, how much of the drug are you being administered? I just know that because in exponential functions like this, uh, we have a decay function or a growth function. Whatever number we have out front, it's essentially your beginning balance. It's when t is 0. You plug in 0 for t, you have e to the 0, essentially. And that's just 1. And so if you plug in 0, the start, all that's left is you have n sub 0 times 1. This would just be 1. And you just have n sub 0. It's your, it's your beginning part. So I know a lot about this already before I'm even starting. And then they start defining the variables. Okay, n of t is the amount left in the body. Okay, n sub 0 is the initial dosage. We talked about that. r is the decay rate, and t is the time in hours. Okay, patient A, A of t, is given 800 milligrams of a drug. So that's the n sub 0 and not, right? That's the beginning part. So I'm gonna, they want us to write that function out. So I'm going to say A of t starts at... 800, and then we multiply E by what they tell us has a decay rate of 0 0.347, so negative 0 0.347 times time. And that's our patient A. And then patient B, they want to say it's B of T, that makes sense. Starts off now with 800, but what? 400 milligrams. A different decay rate of 2.31. E to negative 0.231t. Now, before we any further, just realize that you can get questions that have all types of context that you might not be familiar with. But the idea is that even though you might have no idea what the context is about, uh, you can look for the patterns in the fundamental structure of the function. So this is exponential, and exponential functions can be expected on these types of exams. So don't be overwhelmed by all that information because now we're going to graph this, and we have calculators at our disposal. And the first thing I would say is think about the y-intercepts, right? That's going to be these numbers 800 and 400, and I'll explain that one more time. But I want to just first say that because I know that, I want to go up by hundreds here. One, two, three, four. But it feels so dense to me. Like I feel like it's not going to work out so nicely. So I'm going to go every other one. This would be 100, then 200 here, then 300. Spread it out a little bit so the graph is a little bit cleaner. Then 400 and then 500, and I'll, don't worry, I'll explain again how I know those intercepts. 600, 700, almost there, and then 800. All right, I know that the intercepts are 800 and 400 because if I find A of zero, what's that gonna be? It's gonna be 800 times E to the negative 0 0.347 times zero. And that just means A sub zero is 800 times e to the 0, right? Negative 3.47 times 0 is just 0. And what's e to the 0? What's anything to the 0, any non-zero number to the 0? Just, that's just 1. So this is 1. 800 times 1 is just 800. So when I plug in 0, I get 800. So that's the point 0, 800. And the, using the same logic, we can say that b will hit the point 400. So I've got 800, and then I've got 400. Now, in terms of what to put on the x-axis, so here I should probably label it. I don't know that it matters, but I'll say milligrams of drug. On the y-axis, um, it's going to be time, right? This is time in hours. I could play around with these functions to figure out a little bit more about them, but I think at that point it's just easier to take out the calculator and get to work out with, with these two functions. So here, we can do this quickly. We can say, all right, the first function is 800. And then if you press second um, ln, you get e to the x. 
So it's already geared up to put our exponent in. Negative 0.347x, and then do it again. 400 second ln negative 0.231 times x. Now, I go to zoom 6 before I graph, just to see uh, it's a standard zoom. See if I get anything. All right, I don't see anything. Then I want to go to zoom, and then I go to zoom. If that doesn't work, I go to zoom fit, which I think is choice zero, but let me go down. So six was that one I just tried, standard zoom. And we can talk about why that wouldn't work here, but I'll just show you what I do first. And I hit zero next to see what I get. Okay, there's one function. All right, there's another. All right, so the crossing, I can't really see what's going on because the, the y-axis is too high, so I go to window. And then my y-max is really high up there. Okay, so I'm going to just make that, I know it's got to be about 800, so I'll say 850. And then when I go to my graph, I think I'll be a little bit happier. There's one, that's, that's a of x, and then here is b of x, and you can see they're crossing. Okay. And that makes sense because if we go up here, right, the decay rate for B versus A. B has a slower decay rate, so it's starting off lower at 400 instead of 800, but it's going to lose its height at a slower rate. So even though A of T starts off at 800, it's decaying faster, so eventually it's going to cross B of T somewhere over here, and then it's going to decline past it at a faster rate. So in the calculator, we can find that relatively quickly now. Um, once we have the graph, just hit second trace, go to choice five, which is intersect. And see it says first curve, it just wants to verify which one is the first curve. We push up and down. You see here's my cursor, I'm toggling between them. Either one could be the first curve. I just want to go to the right so I can see it. There it is. Enter. Now it should automatically jump to the other curve. If it doesn't, press up or down. Enter. And then now it wants to guess. Um, I think, it, and I think it, I might, I never really looked this up, but I think it's good that's asking you to actually guess where it is. About there. And then it's going to approximate it. There's our intersection. It's saying they're meeting at about 5.98. So I'll write this down. So 5. Point, this is the intersection 5.98, and then 100.60. So I round it to the nearest hundredth. Why do I do that? I just know that in any situation where there's more than one function on a graph, they're usually asking you about the intersection of those two graphs. So then I'm going to say, all right, well, I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then 6. OK, so that means they're going to meet somewhere about here, and they're going to meet at about 100. So. So b of x is about 5.98, 100.6 so here. So maybe getting another point just makes my life easier here. So 3 is at 282, and the other one's at 200. So OK, so let's do that. So 3 is at 282 here, and the other one is at 200. So I didn't do as bad of a job, I think, with b of x. But b of x is kind of like this, All right? All right. Sorry, my, my graphs are not looking good right now. Let me try to fix this. Oh. <laughs> oh, boy. My tablet, I'm not having the best time here. Okay. And then A of X is going to come swooping down, but I know it's going to hit this point as well. So that's kind of my third point there. And again, you want to capture the fact that A of X will sweep below B of X. And this is definitely enough, right? Let me label this A of X. And I've seen students do more points. And if you have the time and energy, do more points. The more points you add, the better your graph is going to look, and the better it's going to help you, and the more it's going to help you in a problem you're dealing with. So here, again, I, you might label some of these points. This is 5.98, comma 100.6. Here, I might remind myself, oh yeah, this point, what was that, what was that? I, I can look back at my calculator. 282.48, so 3, 282.48. And then this point right here, and I don't think you need to do this, especially if they don't say it. 
but I'm going to do it for myself. So it's 3 and then 200.3. Okay. The 0 0.03, I believe. Yes. Okay. All right. To the nearest hour, when does the amount of the given drug remaining in patient B begin to exceed the amount of the drug remaining in patient A? Okay, so at first there's less drug in patient B, right? But past this point here, the nearest hour, which is the sixth hour, six hours, you don't need to explain anything here. Um, after that point, there's more of the drug in patient B than there is of the drug in patient A. Right, because again, the decay rate of A is larger, so it goes it loses more faster. The doctor will allow patient A to take another 800 milligram dose of the drug once only 15% is left in the body. Okay, so first of all, let's find that 15% of 800. It's 0.15 times 800. What does that equal? Okay, so quit out here. 0.15 times 800 is 120. Okay, so we want to know when do we reach 120 milligrams. So an, an, I think an easy way to, to deal with this in the calculator, you want to find when is, which one is it? Patient A. When does A of X, now A of X was 800 times E to the negative 3.47 T. Let's do this on a calculator and then algebraically really quickly so you can see both ways. So what I would do, I want to know when does this thing equal 120? When is 120 equal to 800 times e to the negative 3.47 t? And on a calculator what we can do is we can say under y equals, this is one of my favorite things to do, you just plot the line y equals 120 and see where it intersects a of x. So I'm going to turn off the other function, just go over to the equal sign, hit enter. And now on my graph, I'm going to get a vertical line at 120 and then get a of x as well. Where they meet is the answer to this question. So I go to second trace, choice five is intersect, and then same thing as before, first curve, second curve, and then go over and guess. Okay, let's go over. And notice it calls a line a curve. It calls everything a curve in my experience. Okay, so at 5.46120, and what do they want to do? They want us to find out to the nearest tenth of an hour, so 5.5. .5. So at t equals 5.5. .5. Now look at this. They don't ask you, so you can say 5.5 .5 hours. I would always do that. They give you a unit. You can be very explicit about what you're saying. It's 5.5 .5 hours. They don't say to explain this, so we can stop there. Now, what if they ask you to solve it algebraically? What would you do? What would you do? Because you couldn't use that graphing technique then. You only use it to verify your answer. To start solving for t, divide both sides by 800. So you get 120 divided by 800. If we divide 800 on this side, all we're left with is e to the negative 0.347t. All right. Then what do we do? Well. I think the easiest way to deal with this is to take the natural log of both sides. So the natural log of 120 over 800, and then the natural log of this. If you take the natural log of e, all you're going to be left with is whatever the exponent is. Um, so, but I'll write that out so you can see. The natural log of e to the negative 3.47t. This is saying e, the base, the base of the natural log here is is e itself. So e to what power is e to the negative 0.347t? Well, that's just negative 0.347t. And that's going to equal the natural log of 120 over 800. And I'm just going to leave that alone. I'm not going to do anything of that yet. To solve for t, I have to divide by negative 0.347. So t is going to equal the natural log of 120 over 800 that whole thing divided by negative 0.347 and that will give me the same thing 5.5 .5 to the nearest tenth so that's I mean here it's 5.5 .5 hours either way we get the same answer but this technique uses logarithms and they can throw anything at you right you don't know if they're gonna allow you to solve it graphically but just again if they don't ask you to explain don't waste your time doing that um, there's a lot of problems on the regions so if you have an opportunity to not explain something please make sure you don't do that. Uh, don't explain it. All right, well, thank you. I hope this helped.